Uh, hey, you guys remember that one time we were all gonna go crack some biscuits with the boys? Yeah. Crack some biscuits. Or what about that time we almost lost all of our fingers because it's so cold out? That was fun too, right? I've never been in cold weather this cold before. <laughs> I've been in some cold weather because I went to school in Montana, but never this cold. And I'm never going that far north in my life. <laughs> well, that is why we read so we can see other people's experiences and we don't have to. Welcome to the Codex Cantina, where my name is Una. And I am nice and warm crypto in Florida. <laughs> So this story takes us to the very cold Yukon Trail where we follow an unnamed narrator, right? And it's a tenuous plot of just wanting to meet up with some friends and taking a shortcut. There's there's not a ton of uh, plot there, but there is a lot of cold to Crypto's points. He thinks it's only 50, but it's actually like, what, 75 below? What Was that the final score? Oh, yeah. No, did I say 50? I meant negative 50. Negative 50. <laughs> like you spit and it freezes before it hits the ground type. Cold. Oh, yeah. Head off the main trail with just a dog and not listen to those <laughs> men that advise us against it on Sulphur Trail. Goodness. No, you're going to listen to the old man that gave you advice and build a fire and always take a friend. <laughs> no, see, you're you're a dog person, right? Like, you could probably relate to this guy, right? Like, yeah. like you get it, like, with the dog. I Cat guy, okay? Didn't understand this at all. Heck no, I'm dog not guy. going off the main trail with a cat. I am sitting back in the warm fire and like I know my instincts. I am not going to go crack some biscuits over seven negative 75 degree temperature weather. I this is this is your territory, not mine. I, I have two dogs, but I don't know if I would subject them to that. So the dog has an instinct for fire, right? And maybe that's why it follows man. So we've got a little bit of a man versus wild conversation here, but where does this dog fit in? in your eyes. Is this dog nature? Is, is this dog? I mean, it's kind of a lot of times they talk about dogs being broken by men. Like they're taught to avoid their instincts, but to only follow commands. Where's this dog fit in the picture? Yeah. I thought the dog was intelligence versus instinct, not necessarily maybe like man versus nature. Mm. I mean, maybe that okay. is, you know, intelligence is man and the dog is, is instinct or, or nature. Sure. I like that. I like that because here's a good point to that too. You think you're you're associating the man with th with intelligence? Is that correct? Uh, try. I, I mean, he we try? does not display a lot of intelligence during this. <laughs> but I mean, they, yes. I mean, that's it. That's supposed to be what d is decisive between us. The man and the dog is the man can use tools. He's intelligent. He's supposed to be quote superior than the dog. We have the quote: "The man went steadily ahead. He was not much of a thinker." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're using your power observation against me. <laughs> so they continue along, and at one point they see this dangerous section, right? Like, okay, logically, this doesn't look good, right? And the man pushes the dog into it. What'd you think about that? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't know, what, what was this guy, like, the dog is not a sacrifice there, buddy. Why would you, you do this? It's supposed to be, you know, man's best friend. I, I would never imagine doing this to my dog. Um, I, I feel like there's better ways. And maybe it's because that's cold. His brain is not fully functioning. But I, I was a little bit angry at them. I, I already, I like dogs. I don't like this guy now. And I'm like, dog, you just need to leave him and go and save yourself from this guy. Because he's not a good dude. Well, I think it I think it shows you the distance this man has from the dog. This isn't a, a purely affectionate relationship between the two. And it also shows you that the dog has a lot of instinctual skills to what your point was earlier, right? Like cuz he starts biting out the ice in his paws and stuff like that that he had from like the water. That uh, I think it shows some intelligence and instinct from the dog's perspective to your earlier point. Now, when they arrive at the stopping point, the man kind of laughs at the folly of death and not building a fire, which I thought was kind of interesting, right? The quote, then he knew what was wrong. He had forgotten to build a fire and warm himself. He laughed at his own foolishness. As he laughed, he noted the numbness in his bare fingers. And this is where we start to think about that man from Sulphur Creek. And you're like, well, wow, why is this main character like, so full of hubris, so full of confidence that he can laugh at like, oh my gosh, I almost died. I can't feel my fingers. Like, this is not a main character that I think we're supposed to put a lot of trust into his intellect per se. I saw some good symbols here. I think the sulfur kind of representing death and that maybe he should have trusted the old men and done what they told him to do. And, and maybe he would have lived. 
I, I also think this kind of sets up the idea of that he doesn't know exactly what he's doing, and he's kind of a, a, a fish out of water story a little bit here. That he's bumbling his way through this story some. Darn men from Sulphur Creek, had we just listened to them. But you know what? The man just pushes on. You know why? Because he wants to go crack some biscuits with the boys, right? But meanwhile, the dog's like, hey, can can we hang out by this fire a little bit longer? Like, I think they literally said the dog yearns for the fire, longs for the fire, if you will. And uh, the man is prioritizing his desires. Like, he wants to do this. Oh, I want to take this shortcut as opposed to his needs, right? Like you need to be safe. You need to travel with another person. And that's what this dog is able to do over the man. The dog knows what he needs, fire, food, survival, as opposed to what the dog wants per se. Like it's, it's a, it's a need versus desire. It's an intellect versus instinct, man versus nature. There's a lot of different opposites that you can kind of view. And what is ultimately a very compact story of a man traveling through his own hubris in a very cold environment. And he, he doesn't seem to anticipate the danger that keeps coming up to him as he, he moves through this, this journey across the woods with the water and, you know, the, then the getting to the tree and, and building the fire in the wrong place and his hands going numb. He just doesn't seem to notice this danger around him. And the dog is, and he, he, he's like this lifeline of like, hey, stupid, don't do this, ignores it. And then we get to the next point in his journey and he's like, no, don't do this. And, you know, the dog's trying to save him and he just doesn't, he doesn't think about what, what was going on around him. The man was not a thinker, right? Yeah. And the man makes his mistake. He falls into the water. He is soaked up to his boots, at least his socks are wet. So he can't really go on and make his 6 p.m. date, right? Like, again, he's thinking about his needs of getting there by 6 p.m. as opposed to his desire his 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 necessities at this point if i don't dry out my feet i'm going to die like like why are you wasting time thinking about how you're not going to make it on time all of your energy should be focusing on survival at this point in time bunch of matches and just burns them all up trying to make his fingers work instead of getting a big fire like it's just it's the breakdown of man i feel like what this story is is like when you can't overcome one thing your problems compound and he doesn't use his, his brain anymore, and he almost reverts back to lesser than the dog. Yeah. Well, and it's it's kind of strange because he also, like, thinks back to the man at Sulphur Creek as being womanish at this point in time. Like, efe- like be- effeminacy being—that's not a word—the femininity being bad— in a sense, uh, is kind of like his like pejorative way of like looking at the situation, like like oh, only man can accomplish this. It was it was a very strange passage for what is ultimately a life and death situation for this this boy at this point in time. Yeah, what, what did you think about as we near the end and once again put you know gonna kill the dog? Oh boy, that was something else, right? Because. You know, first of all, what led to that was, again, his own calculation, his own his own tactical mistake of building the fire too close to the tree so the tree melts. So, again, nature wins in the man versus nature. Again, uh, knowledge would have won here as opposed to that because he followed his instinct of just wanting to get fire right away. There's a lot of, you know, that cont- continuity of those themes showing how, at least from London's perspective, that nature wins, that instinct wins over, over all others. And then his he's kind of like conflicted when it comes to that dog that like he knows that it's not going to work. There's a lot of things the man knows for not being a thinker. And there's even that quote when he says, when it is 75 below zero, a man must not fail in his first attempt to build a fire. This is especially true. If his feet are wet, if his feet are dry and he fails, he can run along the trail for a half a mile to keep his blood moving. But the blood in wet and freezing feet cannot be kept moving by running when it is 75 below. No matter how fast he runs, the wet feet will freeze even harder. Uh-oh, right? Foreshadowing, right? So to your point with this dog situation, miscalculation, right? And now we have all this foreshadowing about how he's most likely going to die because you must not fail at your first fire and you can't run it off. But that's exactly what he ends up doing anyways, right? He finally resorts to just bumbling around when it's too late, I would say. Yeah, I agree. I feel like this, to me, I took from the story of that you need to learn from your elders a little bit. I, I think that maybe what London is saying, to me anyway, that if he had listened to 
the old timer and he had all the tools to save himself. You know, he, he could have gotten there on time. He had the matches, he had the knowledge, but it all turned out to be useless because of his own pride and that nature is always going to beat us if, if you are a prideful person. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad London went that way. I was a little bit worried to your question about the dog. Cause I was like, I hope he doesn't go all Luke Skywalker and taunt on this dog. Like an empire strikes he back. He was I going just, to man. He was going to sleep inside the dog. Oh, thank you, Jack London for making sure nature won in this situation. <laughs> and like how graphic and horrible could this story have turned out. And instead, you know, the guy gets his upcomings and the dog, his nature or instincts prevail. And the dog gets to, you know, hopefully survive. He had the thick fur and he was going to be okay. And so, so the dog at the end, you know, the man collapses, he dies after trying to run. We all know he couldn't run because he told us he couldn't run. He passes out, dies, dog smells it, whimpers, then moves on, right? The dog is to our earlier point, prioritizing his needs over his desires. Like, let's say he was really attached to the man, his desire for the man, as opposed to his needs, needing fire and food. London very clearly paints the picture that in my, in my image, okay, let me ask the question instead of saying my opinion. What do you think London paints a picture of being more important needs or desires? Oh, needs for sure. Yeah. If Every you take time. care of your necessities, then you will have the potential to have more desires. Yeah. What does London paint as being superior? Intellect or, or instinct? Uh, yeah. Instinct is far more valuable than intellect. <sighs> I think he kind of shows strengths and weaknesses to both because isn't it intellectually better to have traveled with a friend per the sulfur man's advice, right? Isn't it intellectually better to have built the fire further away from the tree where the snow wouldn't melt and fall on it? Like to me, it's not as clear cut, I think with those two, but I think you could make a case for either one. It's just, I think there's also counter arguments. Now the last one, what's better, you know, man versus nature or man versus wild. Like what, what's superior do you think in London's story here? In London's story, obviously, the, the, the representation in the dog, right? Because the dog survives. Yeah, the, the nature element, right? Like nature put out the yeah. fire. Nature took the man's feet. Like th there's nothing Nature's that's going to conquer nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So overall, interesting story that is is compelling. I think it's a very compelling read, but it's also very... It's kind of like a fable, in a sense. Like you can tell this story as like a warning to future generations about some of these elements of... of of why do you listen to people? Why do you listen to the intellect first desires and such every now and then? It's it's a it's a fun story. I liked it. Not that it was great. I think about a few of those things that you'd mentioned there, and as you were asking me questions of what if we saw this more from the dog's perspective? Because mm. his owner, his friend that he's trusting go on this journey, because you know, the the advice was don't travel us alone. Well, technically the man is not alone. And if we look at it from the dog's perspective, he's not alone either. And he has his, his owner, his master that's supposed to take care of him, that's providing for him, fail him time and time again. Yet he won't leave him until dire straits at the very end. So yeah, I like this story. It was cute because the dog made it. <laughs> Otherwise I would have been angry. <laughs> And you know where the cat was the whole time? Back in, in the, the village, in, the cabin. in front of the fire, <laughs> sleeping biscuits. in front of the fire. Yep, yep, <laughs> cat people know where I'm at. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to the talk today. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. If you would like to join us on that journey, hit that subscribe button to join us. Una out. Peace.